Rapid Trigger seems to be the holy grail that every keyboard manufacturer is tracing right now. It all started with Wooting and their analog keyboard, which first implemented the Rapid Trigger function. Then we had Razer and SteelSeries implemented in their analog keyboards. SteelSeries did it really well. Razer, not so much, there were some issues. And it seems that Razer have learned from their mistakes and the newly released Huntsman V3 Pro which I have over here in the 10 keyless version, does a much better job at implementing rapid trigger and allowing you to adjust it to your needs. The new Huntsman line of products uses new V2 optical switches from Razer, which seem to be much better tuned for the rapid trigger functionality. Finally, we can adjust it from 0.1 up to, up to 4.0 actuation, and you can also change the rapid trigger sensitivity. If you want to change the actuation level on the keyboard, you have two ways to do it. First, is the built-in menu. We have a screen on the keyboard which helps you change the actuation point of the keys. Uh, all you have to do is press function tab and then you enter the menu and you can change the actuation point for all of the keys at the same time. If you want more control and have different actuation levels for different keys, you need to download Razer Synapse and change it there. The software allows you to assign different levels to different keys depending on your needs and on your playstyle. Using the built-in menu allows you to change the actuation for point from 0.1 up to 3.6 in 0.4 increments, so it's 0.1 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, and so on. Using the software, you can change the actuation level in 0 0.1 increments and, like I said, do it for each individual key separately. If you don't like the software and don't want to have it running in the background, the good thing is you can save the settings to a custom profile, export the profile to the keyboard, store it there and access it whenever you need to. And the more interesting feature is Rapid Trigger. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the feature, it basically allows you to reset the switch as soon as you start releasing it. So instead of waiting until it passes a certain point, like with classic mechanical switches, it activates again as soon as you start releasing it. And with the V3 Pro Huntsman, we have very fine control over how the rapid trigger will work. And you can change uh, the settings in two ways. First, using the built-in menu on the keyboard, same as with the actuation lever, where you have the screen and the screen shows you the sensitivity of rapid trigger. Setting it all the way to the left will make the button very sensitive and reset as soon as it starts going up going all the way to the right makes it less sensitive, which should help you prevent any accidental uh, input. But honestly, all the fine tuning comes from Synapse, so I would suggest you download it and start playing uh, with the actuation rapid trigger in there. In Synapse, first of all, you can define which buttons support rapid trigger, something you cannot do using the built-in menu on the keyboard. And you can also assign a different sensitivities, different rapid trigger sensitivities for each of the buttons individually. Something, again, you cannot do using the built-in keyboard menu. But it does even more than that. It allows you to assign different sensitivities for downstroke and upstroke of the key. So if you want to have a very sensitive button, you can assign 0.1 rapid trigger activation on the downstroke. But if you don't want to make accidental inputs, you can assign like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 sensitivity on the upstroke. So you won't accidentally start spamming the button when, you, when you're using it. And it really does help you fine tune the keyboard to your playstyle and to your needs, whether you're playing FPS, mobile games or something else. Now I have tested the keyboard with the most sensitive setting, which is 0.1 millimeter, and it actually seems to do the job really well this time. As soon as you start releasing the key, it becomes active again. So you can press it really fast and really start spamming it. It helps a lot with the movement as you don't have to wait for the key to go all the way up or halfway up until it becomes active again and allowing you to strafe more fluently, more rapidly in online shooters is especially helpful. Now I have tested the most sensitive setting which is 0.1 millimeter and I have to say that when compared to last generation Huntsman optical switches it does the job really well. As soon as you press the button it becomes active and as soon as you start releasing it it resets back so you can press it again and this time the travel distance is really really small and the buttons become really sensitive giving you the really low response time when it comes to the actuation. Apart from that the keyboard is okay. We have double shot PBT keycaps with see-through font. The font is itself is a bit dim and blends too much into the keys when it's not lighting up but as soon as you turn on the RGB it looks really well. On top of the keyboard we have brushed aluminium plate which helps with the rigidity and stability of the keyboard. It's a brushed finish but it's not completely matte, I would say it's semi-matte. It does capture some fingerprints but it's also very easy to clean. We do also get a dial knob on the top right and two buttons which you can assign different functions 
to in the Synapse software. It can either be a media button, which allows you to uh, open specific applications, open the Xbox overlay, or it can be a macro button. In the box, apart from the keyboard, you will also find a leatherette wrist rest, which magnetically attaches to the keyboard. The only complaints I have about the keyboard are mostly cosmetic ones. First of all, I think the switches and the stabilizers are not looped and the sound profile is not very pleasant, but I'll let you judge for yourself. So let's do a sound test. Second thing, some of the buttons and the fonts aren't lit evenly. If you look closely at Dell and Home buttons, you can see that the backlight is uneven. As I said, overall, those are mainly cosmetical issues, but for a keyboard that costs $220, all of the things should be really polished. Fortunately, the new Huntsman delivers where it's most important, which is the performance. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Laser. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you soon.